I was just scrolling through uh, uh, the view here of, of everyone that's on so far. I recognize many faces of people I've been in touch with uh, over the last many years. So wonderful to see you and uh, to reconnect, even though it's uh, virtually. <laughs> and so I'll be very happy to offer an opening prayer. Let us pray. Amen. Dear God, we are grateful that we can come together as members of a wonderful church, the United Church of Canada, and especially uh, the Indigenous Church, uh, an important part of the United Church from the beginning. Oh Lord, we know that uh, the journey that we, and the path that we uh, make uh, and go forward is not always easy. And sometimes, uh, we make a step or two forward and one back, but nevertheless, the journey is always exciting. When we share together with humility, with mutual respect, with honesty and openness, with courage and hope, knowing that you are with us every step of the way. And so tonight as we share together and, and uh, reflect on uh, the proposal of the National Indigenous Council to General Council 44. Uh, we pray that uh, we may come to a, a good understanding of uh, a path forward for Indigenous peoples to be uh, uh, fully a part of the United Church of Canada. And uh, with the path, uh, a framework being established for uh, uh, true self-governance. So be with us as we share together this night and uh, may we feel your presence and your spirit and know that your love surrounds us always. All this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen, thank you, John. So welcome <clears throat> once again. And at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the members of uh, the National Indigenous Council and um, just want to do a shout out to the chair, John Thompson. John? Yeah. <laughs> John Thompson is, is our, one of our National Indigenous Council members. Uh, Russell Burns we have on here. Russell, do you want to do a shout out? It's always good seeing everybody across this great part of the turtle, the head. The front paw and the left paw, <laughs> this part of the island. Good to see you. Thank you, Russell. And we have Kathy Cunningham from the National Indigenous Council as well. Honey, Bojo, Kinawea. It's very nice to see everybody, 180 people. That's very good. And look forward to these spending these two hours with you with that is h me watch uh, thank you kathy and also we have uh the uh proposal committee members uh other than uh john uh, uh we do have teresa here teresa you want to do a shout out sure why not <laughs> hello <laughs> 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 And uh, we also have a staff member, Lori Ransom, who will be joining us later during the Q&A period. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, I'm just wondering, I haven't seen, uh, we are missing one member from the National Indigenous Council, Leanne Schmoda. She may be joining us later. Uh, she's also part of the proposal committee. Uh, and I'd like to introduce uh, my staff, uh, just so everybody knows of, of the staff support for tonight. Um, Erin, do you want to do a hi? Hello? Hi, everyone. It's good to see so many people on tonight. <laughs> Liz? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liz. Um, one of the admin assistants. Um, happy to see everyone. Thanks, Liz. Charlene?
always forget that mute. <laughs> anyway, hello everyone. Such a such a wonderful uh, turnout. I see a few familiar faces I haven't seen for a long time. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Charlene Burns. Thank you, Charlene. Martha. Good evening, everyone. My name is Martha Padonaquit. I'm a com community capacity development coordinator for Ontario, Quebec, the East region. Thank you for taking the time to spend with us tonight and to learn and to gather information on our proposal. Thank you, Martha. And Sarah. It's uh, Sarah Stratton, uh, Indigenous Justice and Reconciliation Animator. And it's good to see so many of you here tonight, uh, as everybody else has said, uh, to learn about this really important work and how we do it together. So thank you for being here. Great, thank you, Sarah. And then there's myself too, uh, Murray Prudent. I'll be facilitating tonight's agenda, uh, helping the uh, the National Indigenous Council members to coordinate the, the efforts for, for tonight's uh, uh, Q&A, question and answer period. I want to interject here, uh, um, Marie, uh, we missed one staff member, Springwater, I believe, hasn't had a chance. Oh, Springwater, I'm so sorry. S Spring, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone, that's Springwater here. I'm happy to see everyone. She just sprang into action. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And also to uh, also to uh, let everybody know too, we also have uh, General Secretary Michael Blair uh, uh, listening in tonight as well. Welcome, General Secretary, and also Moderator Richard Bott. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight, Richard. Uh, it's uh, always a blessing to have you attend our Indigenous circles uh, at all times that you've joined in. Thank you, uh, thank you once again. So tonight, uh, we, uh, without further ado, we'd like to get into some of the uh, uh, introductions to the NIC01 proposal that's before GC44. And again, yeah, like I mentioned to those, uh, and maybe those that haven't heard yet, you can utilize the chat function. And we do have staff members who will be monitoring the chat function tonight. Uh, we will use uh, some of the questions directed from there as part of the question and answer period as well. Uh, I'd like to start firstly with a, a video of that was presented at the information session back in March, um, back in March uh, 9th to the uh, commissioners uh, for GC44. So people get some understanding of uh, and a review of of the proposal. So I'm just going to share my screen here. John, can you give me a thumbs up if you could see my screen? Uh, right now it's black. <laughs> okay, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Hello yeah. and welcome to the presentation on NIC01, National Indigenous Circle, Restructuring of the Indigenous Church. The National Indigenous, oops, sorry. I pushed a button I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Start it again. Hello and welcome to the presentation on NIC01, National Indigenous Circle, Restructuring of the Indigenous Church. The National Indigenous Circle is bringing one proposal to General Council 44. Part of the wider church's reorganization meant the closure of all conferences and the remaking of the church into regions. This change has been hard on the Indigenous United Church. Since the change, we, the National Indigenous Council, have been given the powers and the responsibilities of a region. However, we, the National Indigenous Council, have not given up on the idea of a much larger vision for the Indigenous Church. Based on grassroots discussion and discernment, 
the National Indigenous Council believes it is time for us to move toward a different relationship with the United Church. It is time to set aside the idea of missions to the Indians and move toward being partners in God's call to the earth. We need to journey together while allowing one another to be who we are, the United Church with all its complexity and the National Indigenous Circle with similar complexity. Though in the graph provided here, the Indigenous United Church looks very simple, but if you take and look at the pixels of, of each color in this graph, you will notice that those can be the representation of the numerous members of the Indigenous Church. Our proposal to the General Council asks that the General Secretary identify and remove all the structured barriers to developing and sustaining a self-determining Indigenous Church within the United Church of Canada. We have also asked that the conversation of restructuring, right relationships and reparations continue between the National Indigenous Circle and a wider United Church. Currently, the National Indigenous Council is creating a proposal gathering for our Indigenous Church membership on April 20th, 2022. All are invited and we're asking for participation. If you have further questions and need further information, please contact Executive Minister Marie Pruden in the email provided below. In closing, I'd like to state all my relations together we can walk with Creator in a good way to support one another in church, faith, and spirituality. As it states here in Romans 12, 16, be in harmony with one another. Do not have a high opinion of yourselves, but in, be in agreement with common people. Do not give yourselves an air of wisdom. This proposal begins to address the Indigenous framework envisioned in the calls of the church and the caretakers report that was accepted by General Council 43. It is the next step in creating a truly Indigenous United Church. On behalf of the National Indigenous Council, I'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your leadership and your commitment to our proposal. And at this time, we open question time with our National Indigenous Council membership. All right, well, that was the, uh, the presentation that was submitted to the information session for GC44 back on March 9th. It's just a bit of a recap and gives a bit of an overview of the NIC proposal. So when you registered, you would have received a copy of the NIC proposal, but also a copy of the General Secretary's proposal, because uh, after we talk about the NIC proposal, we'll talk, we're, we're going to give a brief outline of the General Secretary's proposal. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to uh, John and the NIC to uh, give us some direction to, to the proposal. Uh, thank you, Marie. Uh, maybe uh, it's important just to look at uh, a bit of the history that has led to where we are today. Uh, in 2018, when the church made the big move of restructuring, um, sometimes when changes happen, uh, not all of the implications are foreseen. <laughs> and uh, when the new structure came into being uh, in 2018, um, it had a, an immense effect on the governance of the Indigenous Church with the Indigenous Presbyteries and the all Native Circle Conference uh, uh, pulled out from under our feet. And uh, we were all sort of part of other regions. Uh, we felt very much uh, split up and uh, not that we didn't want to be connected with others. We appreciate that, but we didn't, uh, the Indigenous Church did not want to lose uh, the, uh, uh, self-governance that it had, uh, it had already achieved through uh, years of, uh, of persistence and determination and uh, courage 
by the elders uh, who have gone on before us. Many of them have passed on. But uh, <clears throat> with the restructuring of the indigenous church in many ways, uh, I know especially in, in my area, Kiwetan, uh, really feel uh, uh, they were sent adrift or uh, in, a, in the wilderness and uh, not sure uh, how connection is anymore with the wider church. And so a lot of frustration and even anger around that. And so uh, when the National Indigenous Council was voted into existence at the spiritual gathering in Rama, in, uh, was, that, uh, 20, was that 2019 or 2020? I lose track of time. <laughs> In any case, the mandate we were given was uh, to uh, establish uh, or reestablish uh, self-governance uh, for the indigenous church, with the indigenous church, and, um, and to connect directly with the wider church in an equitable way. Uh, as, as equals, as brothers and sisters uh, in the family of the United Church of Canada. And uh, so our proposal is really uh, establishing a, a framework or a, a beginning place for the Indigenous Church uh, to be itself, uh, to uh, uh, look after the complexity, as Murray mentioned, uh, many uh, nations uh, are a part of the Indigenous Church across this land, and um, and so uh, uh, our task is to uh, to reestablish uh, a system that is uh, um, created by everyone with consensus. And this will take time. And so this is uh, the proposal is uh, just stating uh, that the, uh, the wider church uh, acknowledge this process, that it's, it's uh, healthy for us and indeed for the whole church. And that when we look at missions, um, it's not so much the wider church doing mission to the indigenous church, but that we are, uh, partners in our responsibility and our call to, to Mother Earth. Um, and so uh, our uh, proposal is, uh, is simply to, uh, to begin to uh, reconnect with the wider church in an equitable way and uh, to, uh, to have time to, uh, to reestablish uh, in many ways, the uh, self-governance that uh, that we had before, and even going beyond that. So it's an exciting journey, and uh, I think one that uh, will strengthen not only the Indigenous Church, but the whole church and beyond. Uh, is that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, John. I'm wondering if uh, any of the other two NIC members would like to say a few words. Uh, Russell, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, you know, before we begin, I, 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 I think it's very uh, uh, important of who we are, who we identify as our nations across this great land of ours, right? So, Ania Ane Hiyoman, Nitsika Asun Mikwapis Kitel. I want to share. I want to share uh, what our elders have. A chalk push. A chalk in this uh, first part means spiritual energy that we are all spiritual being. A chalk, and the, and and the chalk push is that uh, is our creation story that we all came from the stars. So we are all created in the same way that we are a very strong spiritual energy within this church. This is the gifts that we bring to this church. Um, you know, for myself, um, way out west on Treaty 6 territory, there's many of us that uh, have been wronged by the churches, Catholic, Anglican, United Church, 
But here we are today, you know, we sit in comfort and we share our stories in a good way, in trust. Um, we, uh, I, um, I have a long story, right? So, you know, I like the people know that I was married in 1977 and I married this fine lady from Muskogee's. Um, her mom was strong UCW. You don't mess with the UCW. I knew that right from the beginning. <laughs> so she said, you know, you want to marry my daughter. You have to marry in the United Church of Canada. And I'm a survivor of an Anglican school religion. I went to two Anglican schools. I went to Gordon's and I went to Prince Albert All Saints. Very nasty places. And my last year, my last day of school in, in, in All Saints at Prince Albert, I turned around and said, I'll never, ever return to your church. Never say never. Here I am volunteering since 1977. You know, because I feel a trust with this church. It's called United Church for a reason. And at times, you know, we've, 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 talk, we've taken different roads. But, you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, there, there's a time in this new energy, a chakos, that we all come together with our spiritual being in a good way. And, uh, you know, we, we can do this. We can do this and, uh, you know, we can share when we, you know, there's so much for me to share, but I, I want to listen to your questions. Kathy? Good evening. Um, <clears throat> I had an interesting day yesterday. I asked a young man who's running a business here on the reserve if he could come down and give me some quotes. And he didn't know that <clears throat> say, our, our Grandma United Church was even there. He thought it was a condemned building. And uh, that kind of hurt. <laughs> so it's, it's a tough time. Um, for the indigenous churches right now for and i think the icing on the cake came when the children were found it brought awareness but it brought a lot of hurt and i've had to look at the hurt that was done in my family my mother and it really makes it hard to move forward and with asking about this proposal, I look at the logo that's been picked up by the United Church of Canada, and it's representing those four colors, those four directions of man. And that's the balance. We don't call ourselves the Rama United Church anymore. We had to drop the word church. So looking at those four directions and all the faiths that come within those four directions we call ourselves the rama united community of faith and that's honoring all the faiths that walk on mother earth on turtle island we honor and respect and they're welcome in our church so i don't see what's all we're asking is that balance. That's what we're asking for, for the commissioners to look at. What we as Indigenous people want is that balance to honor that logo. So with that, I say to me, Grant. Thank you, Kathy. Um, at this time, I also now would like to call upon one of our uh, proposal committee members, Teresa Burnett Cole, to give her uh, inclusion to uh, the dialogue on the proposal. Teresa. Thank you, Murray. Um, I think John said it very well when he said, you know, we're trying to get back to a sense of uh, a community um, that functioned 
um, before the changes to the church. Um, when I think about this proposal, uh, what I what I think is that um, we're really asking the church to clear away barriers uh, to, to stop us from doing that. And I, I think about the um, image of Moses parting the Red Sea, you know, and how he cleared away the barrier of the sea so that the Israelites could continue on their journey. And I think what the indigenous church would like the church to do is clear a similar path. Um, we're not asking you to do our work for us. We're asking for the space to do it for ourselves. Um, I, I think that's enough for me. Great, uh, thank you, Teresa. Uh, I, I'll like to share a bit, uh, a bit of direction uh, on this proposal as well as uh, being the um, uh, the staff member uh, working with the National Indigenous Council and the proposal committee on this on this proposal commitment. Um, and I, I do want to share a bit of a story on this too, because uh, when I started working with um, a general secretary on on this idea to uh, work in, in good relations with the non-Indigenous church membership, in particular the GCE and the National Indigenous Council, the NIC, and, and trying to collaborate the, the two together in, in good partnership and what that does that actually mean in, in the levels of meeting face-to-face -face, uh, uh, on common ground at on the same level. Uh, we, we worked on this, uh, it's been over a year now that we've been working on this, this idea and strategy, but one of the main hiccups to all that was you know, it's we're we're trying to action and do this, but when we look at what we're given uh, in in light of, you know, yes, we've been we've been given the 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 purpose to act as a region and be represented in in regional capacity, but what we were actually trying to achieve was is something greater than that. We were trying to achieve equity that we were nation to nation relations. And so we were trying to commit to that, but, and this is the best way I always put that, the shackles, we had shackles on our wrist as the indigenous church. We, we based on what was in the manual, based on the description of the national indigenous organization, we couldn't, we couldn't be equitable and be at the common table on at this at the common ground. So this is part of the reason why this has been brought forward to the National Indigenous Council uh, last year in May to start working on on the thought process and then going into the draft process over the fall and then presenting the the first initial proposal idea in October to the General Council Office for GC44, and then it also then evolved from there to what is presented to General Council 44 presently. So with also the guidance of General Secretary and moderator, uh, helping us to understand that we're missing a, a bit of the formula, we're missing the vision. We need to create the vision to walk together. And this is what the, the proposal committee then committed to is creating the vision for both the National Indigenous Council and Elders Council to walk together with the General Council and General Council Executive and, and the two uh, being nation to nation perspectives. That was the, 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 the thought process. And this is where, I, the Indigenous church membership feels this needs to go as well. Uh, with our leadership respectively, always leading us to this task and always looking to our elders and our leaders for, for those formal, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, leadership to, to what we need to be. So I just wanna add that in as part of uh, some understanding as that we were physically trying to achieve this, but uh, 
we we had shackles. <laughs> the best way I could say, we had shackles on on and would that wouldn't allow us to go to and take those steps further where we we need and we want to be as 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 given peoples, given nations. Um, so. Uh, John, is there anything else you would like to add on before we go on to um, to the GC uh, for, uh, General Council, our General Secretary's proposal? Uh, uh, no, I think you expressed it well, and um, I, uh, this leads very much to uh, to the General Secretary's proposal, uh, which basically uh, uh, is uh, removing. Uh, the barriers or the hurdles uh, that make uh, uh, the indigenous establishment of, of self-governance uh, uh, makes it easier uh, by removing these hurdles or, or uh, structural uh, structures like, like remits. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I think everyone has expressed it well, and I appreciate the comments of, of all of our NIC members. Thank you. Thanks, John. So uh, moving forward to our next part uh, of description here, John's mentioned that the General Secretary's proposal, G General Secretary uh, Proposal 10 uh, is, 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 is in partnership with our proposal, NICO1's proposal. Uh, General Secretary is proposing the omits of remits um, to for the Indigenous Church and 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 basically are to to allow us the time and the structure to 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 declare who we are as an Indigenous Church party or and and peoples. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, share. Uh, and General Secretary, I've I've taken the liberty of uh, okay. taking. Thanks, so, Taking some of the uh, of your proposal uh, for for tonight's event, so um, I'm just going to share that with uh, with uh, the group tonight. And I'm just going to wait for my screen to clear so I could go to my slideshow. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to share the screen as is. Uh, I know it's hard to maneuver sometimes on Zoom, uh, but GS10 Living into Reconciliation, and this is General Secretary's proposal. Um, so basically, what is the issue? The National Indigenous Council and elders have been evaluating and working to clarify the implication of the calls to the church with the aim of helping to create new pathways for the relationship and a more equitable understanding of how settler and indigenous church can live together. That work is pointing to some necessary changes that will require a remit process, which has a very colonial feel. And how might the general council respond to the issue? In, in, in short terms here, the general secretary proposes that the general council, A, authorize a category three remit to approve a new structure of the indigenous church within the United Church and relationship to the settler church as will be determined by the indigenous church in its own time and through its own processes within the framework of the calls to the church and without the need for further remit approval and B, approve shortening the time for study and information sharing for regional councils and pastoral charges from 24 months to 12 months for this remit. For the body transmitting this proposal to general counsel, the, this proposal 
is meant to build on NIC01, the National Indigenous Council, General Council 43 Annual Meeting, October 19th, 2019, and the work of the National Indigenous Council, National Indigenous Elders Council, the National Spiritual Gathering, and the Denominational Council to work together in determining a respectful relationship between the two parts of the church. So that is uh, General Secretary's proposal as submitted <clears throat> as well. Uh, all uh, for our commissioners that are here, they and also we've we've sent both proposals to all participants that that registered with us. Uh, so you do have copies of those two given proposals in full details. Um, wanted to just give a brief description of that because the two do go hand in hand uh the once we 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 have the abilities to to move forward as an indigenous church on uh the next step of creating the our structure as who we determine it to be with with the means of the caretakers report the calls to the church and the, the understanding of the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples, we are then able then to continue the work. It's timely. And this is basically just the next step to us in our determination of us having the autonomy to say who we are in partnership within the United Church of Canada. So at this time, I would like to uh, start our question and answer period. Uh, I'm going to let the staff uh, uh, start filtering the, the chats. But before we go to the chats, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, we did ask uh, 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 participants to submit their questions beforehand. Uh, we did get one. So I would like to share that one that was provided tonight uh, with, with everybody. And again, I will share my screen uh, to the question that was provided to us. And we thank, I like to thank the, the participant for uh, sending us the question in advance. Uh, to kick us off in the, the question and answer period, uh, the question is, have all agreed to become part of the United Church Indigenous uh, National Council, so be part of the uh, NIC. Uh, how many have chosen to just be part of an existing region? Price and and basically, they're hoping that their questions can be answered yes. either directly yeah. or a part of the information ses session. And we've asked that uh, it be presented at the information session. So I give this question to our National Indigenous Council members here. And if they want to expand uh, the, their thoughts on it, um, John, Kathy, and Russell. Uh, I can share a bit. Uh, can you hear me? Oh. Uh, yes, um, uh, with respect to uh, the, uh, you know, uh, General Council 43 uh, adopted and uh, accepted and uh, incorporated uh, in its vision, uh, the indigenous calls to the church. And part of uh, that document uh, mentions the uh, the idea of membership for indigenous ministries, uh, whether they be uh, communities of faith or uh, um, uh, urban centers, uh, outreach ministries, uh, that they uh, that they have the choice of of dual membership. Uh, you know, the indigenous church is not wanting to separate. Uh, uh, 
completely from the wider church. We, uh, the indigenous church always wants to, to be in, in good relationship and contact, but uh, there's also a great need uh, for indigenous uh, uh, ministries to, uh, to work collaboratively with one another. And so uh, uh, each uh, ministry has, uh, I guess in a sense, three choices. They can be members of the uh, indigenous circle or the indigenous uh, church uh, uh, organization, uh, or they can be a member of the, the geographic region in which they are located, or they can be a member of both dual membership. So uh, uh, a part of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is for the peoples themselves to to have the right and the authority uh, and responsibility uh, to decide on uh, their, their own self-governance and, and connection. <clears throat> Others can, can add to that if you wish. Or so, <clears throat> Kathy? Kathy here, <clears throat> sorry. Um, I know when when the new structure happened, it's like what John said, um, the Presbyteries kind of scattered and a lot have felt as though they've been in the wilderness. And knowing that these options, even, even Ram and United, we haven't made a choice. I think it's a wait and see um, and see what unfolds before any decisions as to, um, as what John said, the three options. Um, yeah, that's all I can say on that for a moment. Thank you. Russell? Oh, I got to follow a tough lead here, Kathy. I always respect this young woman. Ah, I love her so much. But you know what? Here we see a rethinking resilience uh, from our, our perspective, we, we've got to remember when we say First Nations, we're Indigenous, Métis, and, uh, and Inuit. So, you know, there's other nations that, that we speak for on behalf of, um, of NIC, all right? So that's who I am. I'm a grassrooter, man. I am strong. I have to listen to our grassroots from back home. Um, when, when, when we began this journey, 2006, I think 2007, the, uh, at the steering committee, man, we had powerful elders, Alberta Billy, Jim Angus, late Charlotte Sullivan. Uh, I think we had Lee Claus in the West and this young lady here, Lorna, she was part of our group also. And we went across this great land of ours, you know, just speaking with the grassroots. And we we're, you know, to rethink just how the church was gonna be into the future. We weren't talking presbyteries. We weren't talking church stuff. We were just there to have tea in Bannock. And, uh, you know, from, uh, from what we've seen, they were a change they could say was coming. They could feel there was a change coming because even then they were starting to lose people in their congregation. They were, you know, we went to a church where there was only three people. I mean, you know what, this was, only it's not only indigenous communities but it's our non-indigenous friends also that are that are struggling with uh with people like myself sitting in there and listening to these ministers with long sermons you gotta make them short <laughs> you gotta keep us you gotta get no, just kidding but you know and then came the crtg uh you know what they say, we're gonna flip the table or we're gonna bring everything to the table. We're gonna have a buffet of everything. We're gonna change the structure of United Church of Canada. But during one of our uh, meetings with, uh, with the beginning of our NIC, I remember two, I think it was in 2009 in Kelowna when they finally said, okay, NIC, here you go, you're blessed. We got blessed in Kelowna to begin this journey with, with this church. It's been a struggle. It's been a struggle, yes. So, wow. With this, uh, uh, with this new change, with this new change, so they came to CRTG. And you know what? I think it was about eight or nine months into the program, they didn't have an Indigenous person at the table. 
So, you know, they reached out to our circle and, uh, you know, like, uh, like everybody had a chance to uh, step up to the plate. So at this meeting that we had, uh, the group that we were with, they threw me in. <laughs> so there I was. And, uh, you know, Kathy was, uh, was our, was our chair. And yes, we did remits, John. And uh, one of the remits was dual belonging. It was a tough one, Kathy. It, 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 it was a tough one to, uh, to, you know, to bring out. And uh, many of our nations, we still haven't decided. Like for us, Samson, good fish, we still haven't decided if we're gonna be in this region, Chinook region, or the region on the other side of the highway, right? We're, that's how close we are between these two regions, right? It's like Treaty 6 and Treaty 7. Um, you know, we, we, we still have not decided on dual belonging on where we're gonna, where we're gonna, <laughs> where we're gonna plant our tree, our first tree. So um, again, so the, with that, like we're rethinking resilience of our indigenous perspectives. And, uh, you know, when we talk autonomy, we're not talking about money, but we're talking about our values of, of, of what we can give to the church, the gifts of church doings. and. Uh, Oh, I got so much to share, but I guess I better cut it, cut it there. Thanks, Russell. Um, <clears throat> just, uh, just so, uh, well, there's some clarification on the um, on the participation uh, on the national level of of the Indigenous Church. We have 62 plus. Uh, uh, communities of faith, uh, and we also working on uh, the placement and also the identity of urban indigenous ministries as well, and that we're trying to work in in that inclusion and and that structure, and and that's also been a a pathway that's been brought and been new since the last few spiritual gatherings for the indigenous church community, because that's that is also a path that's growing for us and we we need to keep that momentum going within the urban setting as well um i just want to uh call on to uh charlene here uh there are questions coming up in the uh chat uh, and then i would like to go to those questions now before we go into hand raising uh, amongst the the group here tonight. I do know and I've seen a question in French and I'm wondering if our interpreters actually see that as well. And maybe after we go through a few questions with that Charlene has noted, uh, if, we, if, um, if we can get our French interpreters to interpret the, the French question in the chat for us as well, for our English participants. Uh, but Charlene? Uh, thank you, Murray. And I noticed that Alan Hall's uh, hand is up as well. Uh, but I just want to quickly uh, add a few comments here and, and just bring us uh, to the questions in the chat. First, I want to say um, uh, myself, I've been uh, United Church since the day I was born. And I've worked for the United Church for a number of years now. And I want to let you know that uh, when we were before restructure, uh, Indigenous Ministries did host uh, a number of informational um, informational sessions and to seek grassroots input. Uh, so that did happen. I just want to make sure that people know that. And then another, a comment that was made and uh, incidentally, uh, somebody called Mr. Burns made this comment in the chat. Uh, he says that we, they, and with us, those kinds of uh, uh, words uh, themselves need to be decolonized. Um, we should work now. And I guess the next comment that I want to lift up here is a, a more like a question that came out in the chat. Uh, not clear what the ask is in this proposal. People are still not clear what the ask is. And then further, that same person says, does the United Church offer anything that NIC needs? or does NIC truly wish to go on its own? So those are the questions that have come up and uh, I have uh, further uh, questions from the chat that uh, I'll 
I'll uh, present and share with you once the French questions are answered. Thanks. Uh, Charlene, can you give us the first two questions again? Uh, the first two I'm... questions are uh, not clear what the ask is in the proposal, what the actual ask is. Further to that, the same person commented, does the United Church offer anything that National Indigenous Council needs or does NIC uh, truly wish to go on its own? Those are the questions, thank you. Okay, uh, John, Russell, and uh, Kathy. Russell has his hands up. You'd like to start? start oh, I'm, just, I'm just rubbing my hand. You can see the smoke. <laughs> I'm going to start a good fire here. We're all nice and warm and comfy. and Because we come to a safe place here, right? We're not here to overwhelm anybody, but, uh, you know, we're here to share in a good way. Um, you know, I remember one of our uh, circles, uh, this gentleman, Paul, from uh, French Ministry, man, what a gentleman. I mean, him and I, we hit it off. Actually, Paul did told us a lot of stories. And uh, I remember one uh, circle we were sitting at in, and he start, He mentioned New Zealand. I, you know, he was, Russ, you know, New Zealand, they have a church there where the Mori and the church, they get along so well. There's no fighting. He said they have two circles. And they come together in a good way. And you can see those two circles they join. He said, there's business on the outside, but the inside is where they do their governance. He said, that's one of the reasons why they get along so well. So um, so I think that's uh, um, with that, uh, with what I just told, this is what, like when you want autonomy, we don't want to break away from the church. How, how you know, we're going to steal a lot of your people. They're going to come join us. They're just kidding. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's not about us leaving the church. I think it's about us being a little bit more inclusive with the church. All right. I think um, we need to uh, speak more on what this reconciliation process is. Um, you need to know our history. Not as just one First Nation. People look at us as a First Nation. Oh, they're all, we're not the same. We're, not, we're all different. We're very unique in, our, in the way we do things, in our ceremonies, in our languages. And it, I mean, we're, it, it's such a beautiful um, uh, life that many of us do live. And, uh, but, you know, through the years, it's, it, I know the church and us Indigenous, it's, it's, it's kind of come to a bumpy, kind of a bumpy road, right? But, you know, I, I, I think this is a time of making good relationships. And, and, and for myself, I'm, I'm very patient. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully that I probably wouldn't see this in my lifetime, but I'm just praying that my grandchildren will be involved with that new way we do church. Uh, Murray, I can share a little bit. Go ahead. Um, you know, uh, a person needs to be strong within themselves and, and love who they are um, in order to, to show love and care and connection with those around them. And um, so the Indigenous Church uh, needs to have that collegiality, that uh, um, sharing of uh, uh, truths that have been part of uh, the wisdom of the ages from centuries past, uh, from the many different tribal groups and uh, uh, connections. Uh, there's just so much there that uh, in many ways has been broken and scattered and fragmented. And um, it takes time, a lot of time to, uh, to bring that together, to come to a, a sense of uh, feeling uh, whole and healthy again. And um, 
and there will be always be sharing with the wider church that's that's we what we are as human beings but we need to be the indigenous church needs to be very strong within itself and um you know this is this was acknowledged in the very first apology uh in in 1986 and uh you know uh i don't think uh uh, the wider church and, and even uh, our indigenous church fully realizes the implications of that apology. But uh, the gifts and the uh, uh, wisdom of the elders uh, from ages uh, uh, is so strengthening, not only for the indigenous church, but for the whole church and beyond the church itself. So, um, you know, uh, the indigenous church is not trying to separate itself to be a separate church, but uh, but just simply to be holy and healthy uh, in its own right and to share uh, in that uh, sense of wholeness in an equitable way with the wider church. There you go, see. Kathy here. When Mary put up his hands as the shackles in reading the chat. What I saw was we, what the indigenous church wants to do is like Murray said, is to, is to break those shackles. Those shackles are words in policy from the wider church. And with those words, in those policies and procedures, those are those chains. And they can keep us bound. And what we're asking is, is for those words in, in certain areas of those policies to be broken, decolonized, so that we as an Indigenous people can move forward. And, and, and feel free that there is no more um, policies and procedures and words to hold us. And that's what I'd come back to is that, that balance. Right now it's out of balance because of those shackles of those words and those policies. And when and that's what we're asking for is, is, is to rid ourselves of that so that we can move forward. Like Russell said, indigenous peoples all across this land are all different. And people just think, you know, one reserve or, or their closest reserve. There's so many reserves and so many peoples from the Arctic right down to the southernmost tip, which would be Windsor and all in between. And, and yes, we forget about the urban. And those are some of the biggest populations of indigenous peoples. So, um, you know, putting what John and Russell say together and Murray's example and reading the chat, that's all we want is that balance to walk together like that wampum belt that Teresa has, where we can walk down together, holding hands down that, the, those paths and be in balance. And with that, I say chimigwech, chimigwech. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, just want to uh, revert to the, uh, we got the translation for the French question. I kind of feel and that it's asking what has already been asked in this original question about the proposal and if the needs are being met. Uh, but I'll read what I what we've we received on that. And and again, for our French relations, I'm I hope that I'm um, uh, that we're getting the question right. Can the National Indigenous Council become independent, like the UCC? United Church in the United States. Uh, it seems they formed their own church, ultimately a church affiliate 
with the United Church of Canada, but independent? So that is the question uh, that was in in French in the chat. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, uh, John, Kathy, or Russell might want to uh, uh, expand on, on, on any anything that's already been mentioned. I'm just in a chat box here, just answering some of these questions. So, you know, there's, uh, I think there's a lot of them that we're not gonna be able to get to. So I'm doing my best to uh, get back to them in the chat box. And uh, if, you, if we want, we can hold on to that question. If you want to come back to that question, because it is in the chat. Um, Charlene, was there uh, another set of questions that you can uh, yes. give us? I, yes, thank you, uh, Murray. Um, there's a comment that's been made. I was under the impression that the green light had already been given permission, that the, there's already been approval to make uh, Indigenous ministries to make their own structure to meet their ministry needs, that the Indigenous church already had uh, has had this permission. And I think it's referring to the, um, uh, you know, what Russell was talking about at, uh, uh, I want to say, Okanagan, when we had the, um, when, when the General Council was in the Okanagan, and the Indigenous Ministries was set up, uh, maybe that's what this comment is referring to. Um, but uh, if, if I'm not correct in that understanding that question or that comment, if that person would like to verbally um, present that question to the to the group, uh, that that would be good too. And uh, and then it's also been suggested that uh, people read the calls to the church. Uh, it'll have added information there. Um, and also, uh, um, I'm going to add to that comment to suggestion about calls to the church that people, uh, if you get a chance to go and read the Indian Act, the 94 calls, 94 Truth and Reconciliation Calls to Action, and also the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. These are all um, documents that'll help you better understand uh, uh, what uh, National Indigenous Churches uh, Ministries is and Justice is looking for. Um, and I uh, just, I, I think I'll stop there for now because uh, there's, there are a number of questions in the chat. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest maybe that people start verbalizing some of those questions uh, instead of all coming all through chat because I'm, I'm kind of going berserk. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it seems that everybody wants to, to have a discussion now and um, I will open the floor. I will lead actually into the, into the, questions here uh, uh, so we can still start filtering uh, people raising their hands and such. But the first question that, uh, that I saw on the chat was, why do we worry about how the Indigenous Church is working if our brothers and sisters are worshipping the same true in God? Aren't we trying to find difficulties where there are none? And if you if you don't mind, I'd actually like to answer that question. Um, it, yes, we are worshiping the same God. We worship the same Creator, um, but the the identification of how we worship is is different, and it's so much different amongst the Indigenous peoples. Uh, one one reference I need to make is we are umbrellaed under this identification of being indigenous. But I am Cree, I am Nihil. I, I, am, I come from the nation of the Cree people. Our ways of worshiping and understanding who creator is, is different and also different within our Cree nations. We have five dialects. And we span across, you know, the prairies into into uh, Manitoba, Ontario, and parts of Quebec and corners of Interior BC. And we all are based on our land and geographic locations. 
and induced land given areas. We pay our respects to creator in different ways. Um, and then we expand that to the other, the formal other nations within Canada and given their cultures, traditions and teachings of who God is. And we worship God in those given ways as well. But here we are umbrellaed as indigenous peoples. And so we collectively work together to bring those, those thoughts, uh, unifying our thoughts to, to, to this identification of God, this identification of creator as best we can. So we understand each other. And so that's the way I would like to respond to that question. And if there's anybody else from the National Indigenous Council that would mm -hmm. like to expand on that. But if not, uh, let's, uh, I'd like to carry on with the hand raising here that we have. Uh, uh, I have, first of all, I see Reg Bruce uh, with their hand up. And then after I see Kathy Hamilton with her, with their hand up. So we'll go with uh, Reg Bruce first, please. If you can unmute yourself. Uh, hi there. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. I think Kathy actually had her hand up ahead of me, but <laughs> that's okay. I'll be brief. Um, I see, I have sometimes concerns of, about things that have happened, colonialism, sex settlers, taking the land. Lots of bad things that have happened in the past have to move beyond history. We can do that as one nation and don't need to all be the same. Uh, I understand there are many nations. Indigenous is a umbrella term that does, it's not one size fits all. I wonder when I'm listening, does the United Church have anything to offer that makes the National Indigenous Council, Indigenous Council, want to even create that? Okay, Bruce, uh, Reg, Bruce, I, I got part of your question. Does the UCC have uh, anything to offer the NIC? And then I kind of, I, you kind of faded off in the last part of that. Uh, the, the, the part after that is, uh, or do we properly need to proceed as two separate organizations jointly? Well, uh, okay. So uh, does the UCC have anything to offer to the NIC or do we, uh, properly have to have uh, this identification as two separate uh, identifications. Um, I, I, I feel that this question is a good question to the National Indigenous Council, but I also feel that this is a question to the UCC, <laughs> uh, to the non-Indigenous uh, membership of the UCC. Uh, but for now, I, I guess the NIC members can answer as best they can. Uh, John, Russell, or Kathy? Uh, you know, what the, he was asking what the United Church can offer to uh, the uh, Indigenous Church. And uh, I think simply what the proposal is requesting is uh, simply the freedom to be who the Indigenous Church is and to establish on its own, to chart its own path of self-determination and self-governance. And, uh, and this will take time because of the complexity of the Indigenous Church, um, but it will be very uh, rewarding and fulfilling, not only for the Indigenous Church, but for the whole church. And uh, at the present time, uh, there are many pieces, you know, when the structural change occurred 
uh, things were fractured and there's many pieces floating around. It's sort of like uh, trying to put the puzzle back together again. And this takes time, especially when there's so many uh, various groups involved. So the indigenous church is just uh, seeking uh, and uh, just wanting the freedom to be itself and to chart its own path and to share in the journey with the wider church in an equitable brother-sister relationship. Uh, Russell or Kathy, do you want to expand any further? Um, I can, but it'll take all night. But you know, um, you know, with that, we have a, a saying, our, our, our prof, we prophesized so many things that we can come together in a good way. And Crazy Horse was one of them that said, you know, all these, you know, seven generations, we're all going to come under this, this tree of life. And, and, and it's going to take us time, uh, you know, to come together. Like, what do they say? Each time you step into a river, it's a whole new water. It's a whole new river. So this is where we're at. You know, we all are part of this change of the United Church of Canada. We can blame Kathy for that. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know what we say is the herd of one is the herd of all, but the honor of one is the honor of all. So I I think that's where that's where we have to, you know, begin, and um, that, that's all I have to say. Kathy here, um, <clears throat> pardon me. You know when the <clears throat> the the wider church had to restructure itself. The indigenous church had its presbyteries in, um, in the, um, the all native circle. And we were functioning quite well. Yeah, there was ripples, but in actuality, we were, we were functioning quite well. But because of the wider church had to restructure itself, the indigenous church had to also then. And because of that, it's created um, problems that weren't there before. Example, um, uh, dual belonging. I'm just going to use that as an example. And as like Russell said, and I say, we haven't made a decision in what we want to do. Because we reflect back into what we were, the Presbyteries or the All Native Circle that was functioning quite well. So we're having to create a new path here and move forward but it's really hard when you have um these roadblocks and all we're asking is to um take the roadblocks away so we can move forward and with that i say to me much Great, thank you, Kathy. I just wanna carry on with the, the list of hands that we have up here. So I have Kathy Hamilton, Pat Seal, and then we have Deb Anderson Pratt on third. So uh, Kathy Hamilton, uh, we'll go to your question now, please. So I don't, I don't think it's really a question. Um, I had such a wise learning when I worked with Russell on the Comprehensive Review Task Group. And as Kathy Cunningham said, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was Russell. It's my fault. All of this is my fault. No, that's not true. But um, I, I chaired the comprehensive review task group. And um, I want to just pull out a, a couple of words that we've used this evening. I think unintentional is a word that I want to raise up. That um, the comprehensive review task group worked hard. At trying to understand and trying to create space and trying to trying to figure out how not to cause hurt, not to cause more hurt. And um, we didn't understand. We don't understand. None of us understand the whole thing, the whole story, the whole picture. So I want to just hold up that word unintentional. I'm hearing tonight that there was hurt that was caused because, as Kathy Cunningham said, um, lots of things were working really well. But because the structure needed to change for all kinds of reasons outside of the Indigenous Church, 
um, there was a hurt that was caused and unintentional, completely unintentional. And in fact, really um, the opposite of what we were trying to do, not just because we, we didn't, we didn't pay attention, but because it was not possible to understand the complexity. It's a hugely complex thing to work with all of those nations. It's, it's huge and, and it's hard. It's just hard to understand. Um, I want to raise up the word trust. There, there was an intention of trust. There was a hope for trust. Um, Russell taught me just like a thousand million things about trusting each other. And uh, he's a really funny guy too. And he has great stories. Um, but he taught me a lot about trust and, and about how risky that is to trust. And what I'm hearing tonight is a request to trust that um, this, this, these proposals are about, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out and just get the words out of the way, get the shackles out of the way, get the policy out of the way, make it possible for us to create a space for us to be church together. Um, and so all I have to say is um, let's let's change it together. Let's make it work. Let's let's find spaces to make it work. Uh, I have to say that was always the intention. And I'm so very sorry if that caused hurt to people. It was never, ever, ever the intention to cause that hurt. Um, it was always about creating space, creating trust, creating, creating the opportunity to be who we are as the disciples of Christ. Thanks so much. Can I, uh, can I, can I respond to Kathy real quick here? You uh, sure you know, can, Kathy, Russell. You were, you, were, uh, you know, a beautiful chair and, you know, we had an awesome group of uh, people. I think there were six of us in all that uh, we, we're, we're being called the, the, the structural changer, but it was a tough job. And, uh, you know, even for the indigenous, uh, you know, we ANCC. You got to remember that ANCC also uh, were were kind of exclusive to us that live off. Or I don't like to say off. That's just a nasty. That's that's a word we're going to decolonize off the reservation. I hate that word. Uh, you know, urban, rural people. So many of us don't live on a reserve. So that's one thing that really brought us together. Also, BC Ministries were not part of the ANCC. So this is a huge opportunity as we move forward to the NIC now that we all come together in a good way. We're also involving the Inuit and the Métis. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to be strong. There will be, you know, it's going to take some time, Kathy, but, you know, we're going to work this out. And I'd like to say to miigwech to Kathy for her kind words. Miigwech. Great, thank you. And thank you, Kathy. Uh, go on to our next question here from Pat Seal. Go ahead, Pat. Hi, um, I'm from an urban congregation in Treaty 6, um, South Minister Stunner United Church. And I really appreciate what all of you are doing. But part of me was, would want to know more and be closer. I, our congregation already has um, an elder who is part of our congregation. She's a Kukum, runs the Kukum group in Edmonton. We have a couple of other Indigenous people who come to our church and for whom we do s services. I'm taking courses about Indigenous spirituality from the Snows, John and Tony Snow, and learning so much. Um, I'd like to see it, some of the principles of Indigenous spirituality integrated into the whole wider church. Um, so just don't forget us. I realize that, that you're working um, to claim reclaim your identity and positions and and i'm sorry that that's happened but don't forget us we also need your wisdom uh and somehow to share us so don't be so so 
And anyway, it's a comment, I guess, not a question or a question. When are you going to include us um, in your wisdom? Um, you know, when when um, when we pray, we say, as I'm going to take once kayak, that's all humanity. That's all years. You know, when we say, Oma, Oma, I'm going to teach you something. Oma, Nia. Say that. Oma, Nia. Yeah, I'm a spiritual being. So that's how we begin our prayers. Oma, Nia. I'm a spiritual being. So we're all involved already in that prayer. All right. And Steinhauer, yeah, I love your church. Mm. <clears throat> Great, and thank you, thank you, Pat, for your 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 comments. Uh, and I'll go on to the next uh, question, uh, Deb, Deb Anderson, Pat, if you. Nancy people, there are two things I want to address. the The question of the manual to to uh, requesting that examples from the manual be given. Well, my example is our people were not involved in the creation of that manual. Our ways were not taken into consideration of working through situations in any given community. That's one. The other qu thing, thing I want to comment on is Jillian's comment about pagan worship. I thought that left churches years ago, that kind of comment. Our ways were referred to that when colonization came to us as pagan, as heathen. I thought we were way beyond that kind of conversations within the church. That is very offensive to our people. And I think the person that commented that needs to pray for herself and we need to pray for her. So that that kind of comments don't interfere with what we are trying to work through here today. Aho. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, um, sister. I would uh, like to ask uh, Jordan Kentwell, would you like to uh, speak, please? You're on mute, by the way, Jordan. Sorry, I thought I unmuted myself. Um, uh, Deb, I, I want to say thank you. Uh, you you began saying uh, much of what I wanted to say. Um, I just want to uh, speak to the comment um, that that lifted up. You know, this conversation is really talking about pagan worship, and that referenced um, ministers who are coming from other countries as bringing pagan worship to us. And I think that that highlight is it, something that we need to challenge in ourselves when we when we hear that in our own hearts. Um, that is the very kind of thinking that applies shackles to other people. It is the thinking that the way that um, I, as a white person, as a white English speaking person in the United Church, so a member of the dominant community, the way that I worship, the way that I am comfortable, the way that I express my faith, my Christian faith, is the way to be a Christian. And that people who uh, express their Christian faith in other ways, in other uh, rituals, in other traditions, are somehow not really Christians. That is precisely the kind of thinking that uh, led to residential schools, that has led to so many harms um, in our country, in our church, and, and it is what I hear the indigenous church saying is still pervasive in our church. And, it, and they're asking, folks are asking that we let that go and that we uh, allow folks to be united church 
in a way that is authentic for them and that we embrace one another as relatives in the church, not as, as somehow needing to fit us all into the same box in order to be in relationship. So, and I, I have to say, I found the comment very offensive, but I also know that um, within me lives much of that same attitude uh, that is, that, that my reality, my way of doing things is normal. Um, and I, would, I want to encourage all of us when we encounter that in ourselves to, to question it, to dig under it and to root it out um, because that leads to, to hurt and harm and racism and oppression. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, just a reminder to those that are on, on on the on the presentation tonight if you can make sure that you're uh, muted if you're not speaking uh, it also helps with our French uh, translators during their time with us this evening as well uh, I did have uh, Christine Marie Gladue next but before I get to you Christine I just want to make a, 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 a side comment to uh, respects to what Deb and Jordan had shared um, my mindset is I, I go beyond the uh, the use of that that word, those words and languages, and in particular, if we're uh, thinking of the ideas of spirituality and religion, uh, we are now in a, a, a perspective that uh, we are we have now the identifications of land theology, oceanic theology, and this is part of respectively of who we are as as people. It's it's this little we have the doctrine back and forth. We have the we have the doctrines in place respectively, and we use that terminology to do, also help support and declare who we are in our identifications as indigenous Christians, but it, as as people and nations of people, and also our our cultural base. Uh, there's so much to it, m much grander. And you know, those are old ways uh, of thinking uh, uh, that you know that were mentioned uh, in in the chat, and uh, it, it's very unfortunate. Uh, and it, but it proves that we have so much learning from one another to to do and, and to provide. And you know, in my heart, I'm always open and welcome to 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 provide that. In 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 whatever capacity is needed. Uh, I do want to carry on, sorry, with the next question from Christy Marie Gladieu. Bonjour à tous. Can I speak French or do I have to speak English? Yeah, you can because we are English interpre uh, French interpreters for English. Go ahead. I, okay, alors moi je suis à Montréal. Uh, je suis nouvelle dans l'Église Unie depuis 2010. Je suis nouvelle. Je ne comprends pas que nous discutions d'un sujet comme celui-là. Nos frères et sœurs autochtones ont pleinement le droit, la capacité et l'autonomie d'être pleinement qui ils sont. Il n'appartient pas à l'Église de décider pour eux. Ces peuples doivent s'auto-déterminer politiquement, socialement, religieusement. C'est fini le colonialisme. C'est fini. Je pense à la rigueur que nos frères et sœurs autochtones doivent proclamer leur autonomie. Et les pharisiens, les pharisiens de notre Église, allez vous coucher là, il est de bonne heure. Hein? C'est le temps. I want freedom. For our sisters and brothers, 
I want authenticity and I want to gain from this thousand year old spirituality that they nurture. <clears throat> That's what I have to say. <laughs> Great, uh, thank you, Christine. Merci, merci, merci. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, do uh, Russell, John, or Kathy would like to uh, respond? Uh, I believe she hit the nail on the head, Marie. Um, we all need to be who we are, who Creator made us to be. And when we uh, uh, appreciate and understand ourselves and the gifts Creator has placed within each one, and the understandings of the great mystery that have been handed down from uh, for centuries through the elders and the traditions. Uh, we're all enriched by sharing these stories. There is no one path to truth. Uh, there are so many and we need as a united church and a, and a, a people united in, in faith and spirituality. We need to respect and honor uh, the spirituality of all and acknowledging that uh, it strengthens all of us uh, on our journey. Interesting. Uh, Russell or Kathy, do you, would you like to make any comments at this time before we go to the next question? I'm busy typing. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy? Um. No, I'll wait to the next question, please. Okay, great. Okay, our next question comes. I see Wendy load in with her hand up. Uh, Wendy, go ahead. I just want to say I, I stand in the pulpit every, sorry, every single Sunday. And I say that God loves us all equally, and we all worship the same God, and we're all disciples. And to know that having been given this vision tonight of the shackles is so poignant to me. And I thank you for that. And I don't see any drawbacks to this. All I see is a, a freeing of of thoughts and learning and um, a loss of um, a loss of, of bad, you know, a, a loss of feeling like anybody is worshiping where they shouldn't be and where they could get more, more love and more and, and give more. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I really want to thank you for your visuals and for your incredible input tonight because um, it's put into words what I've always felt and um, my my preaching will take on a little bit of a different tone now and a lot more a lot more input from tonight. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Um, before I get to the next uh, comment here from Marcy Gibson, uh, Charlene, uh, you you had two, uh, two questions from the chat that you wanted to bring forward. Yeah, and one of them is, was quite long, so I've just uh, uh, tried to capture uh, the question in a couple of words, and it was uh, uh, comments and questions about uh, bringing us back to the apologies. Uh, that was one. And the other one is um, uh, there are questions about the financial implications um, of, of, uh, of the proposal. Thank you. Okay, so let's uh, go with the first uh, question uh, uh, regarding the apologies. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming, Charlene, the need to address the apologies? I think it uh, the longer version was uh, yeah that and also to uh, revisit and maybe revise or make real 
uh, the actions around the apologies, the actions that the apologies were asking for or were offering, offering. Um, I don't know if the person that made that comment would like to verbalize that uh, a little bit better, better than I have for you, but it was uh, just the comment around, I mean, the questions around, do we need to revisit the apologies? Uh, okay, and I see uh, Russell, John, Kathy. So uh, I can go, go ahead, Russell. Uh, to to revisit the apologies, like uh, like it's it's run out of water. It's full of holes. <laughs> you know, we uh, we don't need any more apologies. You know, those are just empty words. And you know, with the apologies given from your nature, we never did accept them. And uh, you know, considering uh, moving forward, there's better ways of doing things. And uh, I don't think an apology at this time is needed. Um, mm -hmm. Again, my reserve in Saskatchewan Treaty 6 territory, James Smith, we had a, a, a visitor, an archbishop, I guess it would be, from the Anglican Church. He, he, he came unannounced. He just happened to be there. I'm from a reserve that 80% of us went to residential school, 80%. We are groomed through day school and then we're sent to Anglican or Catholic. So 80% of my reserve and there's 1,200 of us. All right. So what he did was uh, um, he did Try to do an apology, but many of our elders, our leadership didn't even show up for that, uh, for, for his unannounced meeting. And, you know, for, for me, having somebody come to my, onto my territory and says, hey, Russ, I'm sorry for what I did. You know, there's no way that an apology or any amount of money will give me back my innocence as a child. No way, no way. So, you know, I think there's other ways of doing apology. I wouldn't even, I just threw that right out the door. Kathy here. Yes, Russ, I saw that and I, uh, I thought he was, because he was from the Church of England too. So um, I thought he was kind of jumping on the wagon in the sense that, you know, because the, the Pope, so, Church of England had to step up. Um, and yes, I agree with all what Russell said, as well as when I look at um, the delegations that went to see the Pope and, um, and the gentleman that came here to, to Russell's reserve, why are we giving them gifts? That's my question. Why are we giving them gifts? <laughs> I think they should give us gifts. But um, yes, um, I want to come back onto that. Yes, we did not accept the apology from the United Church. We got it. Um, so let me jump on that real quick, Kath. He also uh, uh, mentioned to the people, the small crowd there, that it wasn't the church that did the damage, it was individuals. So that's an echo from what the Catholic said when all these dignitaries went to went to see him. So, you know, from our very special kids, that's why you don't see a lot. There's not a lot of us left, my, my friends. There's not many of our, our population, we're small. And, uh, you know, um, we leave our youth alone because they're practicing the way we did ceremony. They're practicing our language. We just leave them alone, man, and they're getting healthy. But what came from this, uh, um, the Catholic Church was the, um, like they wanted the Pope to renounce doctrine of discovery. And the terra nullius that from the Anglican Church, from the crown, do you think that will happen? It's not going to happen. Yes, the United Church did renounce the doctrine of discovery, but to have the Church of England and the Catholic Church do that, then we're going to, you know, hey, let's sit at the table again. Let's listen to that. Let's listen to your words. 
Great. Uh, thank you, Russell. Uh, um, John, uh, go Mary, ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, you know, uh, nevertheless, uh, the apology in 1986 is a part of our history of the United Church of Canada. And uh, the wording, you know, the reason it, it was received but not accepted. And, and the reason for that was, uh, as Russell and Kathy have said, uh, these, these are just words, apologies are words. But for apology to be uh, really uh, uh, made manifest, it has to happen through the actions that follow. And so uh, uh, the wording of that apology, uh, I think is, is quite, quite uh, profound. Uh, when the moderator said that uh, we are all not what God meant us to be because the settler people, settler church uh, turned its back or, or put down traditional spirituality, traditional languages, culture, you know, and, uh, and so we've all suffered because of that. And so perhaps now, only now, how many years later, uh, the wider church and we're all beginning to realize that we're all suffering because uh, we have not lifted up or, or uh, um, reconnected with the wisdom of the ages to strengthen uh, the spirituality of, of all of us. So I think uh, it's still a, a sense, a, a call, it's, it's, it's relevant and it, 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 maybe the church can be more intentional now about actually living it out and lifting it up and, and uh, you know, putting money and the programs uh, in, in helping to reestablish indigenous language and spirituality and, and sharing uh, the wisdom of the elders. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's an important document and maybe someday it, uh, it will be uh, uh, acknowledged by the indigenous church. Uh, thank you, uh, Kathy, Russell, and John. I want to go on to the second part of the question, talking about the financial implications. If you can give uh, some some uh, brief uh, ideas or, or uh, ideas and thoughts around that, um, I, I know that's probably a loaded question, uh, but if uh, you'd like to answer that, and then after that, I'm going on to Marcy Gibson's question, and then Charlene after. Does anybody want to talk about that, John? I, I'm i sorry, Murray, I I missed the first question there. Uh, 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 to the question on financial implications, uh, what oh. would be uh, some of the scenarios, financial implications uh, uh, alongside, I guess, the initiation of this proposal? Uh, financial implications, I don't think would be much greater than what they are at the present time. In, in, uh, in my view, in some ways, I think perhaps uh, because of uh, uh, sort of the disarray in which uh, not only the indigenous church, but the wider church is in as well, uh, the church is probably spending more money than need be because there's overlap. And um, that's why I say we need to uh, to get all the parties together, and and uh, you know there's many uh, people in the United Church of Canada uh, whose uh, portfolio is uh, involvement with Indigenous ministries, and uh, I'm not even aware myself of all of the pieces, but part of the uh, the journey that we're on is to, to bring them all together and uh, to uh, establish uh, a system of governance that uh, is workable and, uh, and helpful for, for everyone, not, not only the indigenous church, but the wider church as well. So I think uh, cost-wise, uh, it may be uh, even, uh, you know, the church may save money when we uh, 
find when we discover all of the uh, the peoples and uh, uh, you know those involved in indigenous ministry and, and paid accountable ministries. Uh, thank you, John. I think just to add on to the to answer that question, I think from my 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 leadership in in the administrative portion of it, there's always going to be financial implications with anything that any group and organization does in 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 regards to structure. But I think we will look at that in the perspective of once we we allowed the National Indigenous Council and also the um, you know the elders council when they when they formulate some some clear decisions as to what the needs are going to be in place of will we need some additional administrative support for this portion of the indigenous church uh, things like that will and may arise uh, um, so there 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 will be uh, I, I without a doubt there will definitely be some some type of financial implications and and we're ready to work with the the general counsel uh, executive on 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 partnership with that as well um i see we're, we are uh, coming sh uh to uh to uh to the end of our time and i want to uh, see the last two hands i know marcy's hand must be getting sore and then then charlene but uh i want to go on to marcy's question and then charlene and then come to a close where we will have some closing remarks from our national indigenous council uh leadership here and then closing prayer so marcy uh your question please Thanks, Murray, and I'll try and keep it short. Um, I did put my question in the chat, um, so it may have already been seen, but um, for me as a commissioner at the last General Council in 43, it was really transformative that the calls to the church were presented and were shared, um, but that the General Council didn't have, wasn't given the choice to vote on them or not. Uh, because it wasn't general counsel's uh, role or position or authority to decide on whether the calls to the church were something to be passed or not. And I think that was an important shift in process. Um, and I'm wondering with these two proposals, whether there has been thought to, you know, the process of engaging general counsel in them that is not, again, not an authoritarian process. So that may not get answered tonight. I just want it on the table. Uh, John, Russell, or Kathy, would you like to <laughs> comment? Uh, uh, just a, a short, a quick comment, Murray. I believe the calls to the church were actually uh, accepted and adopted at, at a general council executive meeting uh, following uh, the GC 43. Uh, Teresa might know more about that, but uh, I believe that's what happened. And I'm getting a head shake from uh, moderator. <laughs> As I can see him. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure if, if he's or if he's looking at chats or what. <laughs> May, may I may I may I speak, Murray? With, yes, please. With John, John, would that be okay? Uh, no, uh, actually, they were accepted by General Counsel Forty Three in exactly the process that Marcy was saying. They were presented and accepted without debate. Uh, the The difficulty uh, for for one of the proposals that we have here, the General Secretary's one, is because it has to do with remits, because it has to do with, as, as Teresa said, clearing the way, we actually have to follow settler process in, in some of this. And that that's the difficulty. Uh, sorry, I have to be really careful. I, I don't want to take this over, but that's part of the difficulty that we're struggling with, with the fact that we have to have these proposals, is how do we clear the way so that the Indigenous part of the United Church of Canada through the National Indigenous Council can create that, that space that they wish to create with the, with the system that we've got. 
and and we're trying to figure out how how to get through that through this general council. So yeah, yeah. sorry for jumping in there. Thank, no, thank I, you. I thank you, moderator, because I saw you shaking your head. I knew I knew you had a response to <laughs> to to that scenario for sure. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go to Charlene. Uh, you have your hand up, and then we'll leave it at that for the. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Murray. Um, first, I want to say to the people, I'm I'm a community capacity development coordinator. I work for Indigenous Ministries, uh, United Church of Canada. I'm also a residential school survivor, but that will never be my legacy. I want to make comments about the apology, the, the questions about the apology. Apologies can be given to a collective as we're, as we're done by the United Church and different uh, organizations in apologizing. But I truly believe apologies can, cannot ever be accepted by a collective. They must be accepted by individuals, by us, one by one. To bring my, my point home, I would never feel that I have any right to even accept an apology on behalf of my uh, husband, Russell. Uh, with that, I also want to say, um, I wanted to make it quicker than that, because I really want to hear from Ray Jones. Ray Jones has been sitting very quietly in the back back 40 of uh, this, this 150, 175 people. I wanna hear from Ray. He has a long history with Indigenous Ministries. Thank you, uh, Murray. Ray, uh, good that you could join us this evening. Always good to see you. Uh, would you like to say a few words? Uh, thank you. I, uh, I had a lot of problems with the computer. So anyway, I finally got on uh, about half an hour after you guys started, 45 minutes. But from what, in, in respect to apologies, uh, when uh, the apology came out in 1986, uh, I took it personally. There were some real, real good statements in the apology. And the reference to residential school was important to me as a person that went to Edmonton residential school for five years. But I agree with somebody's statement, I think Charlene just a while ago, that to accept an apology collectively is very hard. Well, in, in respect to society as a whole or, or organization as a whole. In, in, for me personally, the fact that the apology was finally made in 86. And the other great part of 1986 apology is that it was the United Church that came out first amongst all the different uh, churches in Canada. And that, and that was very important to me. Before I went to residential school, I was very much part of the church community as a child through my parents and grandparents and our community as a whole here in Kizikuka, Northwest British Columbia. Our community was very, very strongly oriented to the spirituality of the church, both the United Church and our, and our Salvation Army Church that's here in the village as well. So 
but it's always interesting that members of mainstream society in the church have not yet fully felt the essence of the history of the United Church and Residential School and other Anglican, Catholic, It's, it's important to have our history out there. Here in uh, Western Gidiksan, we have three villages that, in the Gidiksan Mason, uh, they're Western Gidiksan. Our dialect is slightly different from the Eastern Gidiksan, but we're still all Gidiksan. But, but we've been working. There's three of us that are residential school survivors, and the three that didn't go to residential school. We all work together. But one thing we have in common, we all became hereditary chiefs as well. And we've been working with our fellow survivors in different programs to, to help these others. And also our survivors, children and grandchildren. And we've had different projects. And our latest project, just to make this short, is we will be putting up a totem pole, a 50 foot totem pole as a memorial to a resident to our residential school colleagues who have passed on, as well as to us and our children, the current survivors that are still living. And the totem pole will have the four main crests of the Gitxan Nation. And that's the fireweed, which includes my house crest, the grouse, baby grouse, the owl, and the orca, or killer whale. We have a frog crest, which is by itself, the wolf crest by itself, and the eagle crest. So these crests will be embodied in this memorial pole. And we're been asking our fellow survivors what other symbols should go on there. We have three so far that have come forward. One is the rail, railway tracks. Because here in the Northwest, we were taken by seeing our rail, railway from Prince Rupert, Hazleton to Edmonton and back again at the end of the school year. If you're lucky, you come home for it during the summer. The other is a steamboat, the old, because our fellow survivors that went to Alberni Residential School, Allard Bay Residential School, they were taken from Prince Rupert to uh, North 
Vancouver Island, Nullet Bay, and West Vancouver Island, Alberni. So these small, as they, as you read in different novels called the tramp steamers. <coughs> then the third uh, idea that we got so far is the hands of children upraised to symbolically say, you know, help. So, uh, totem pole nowadays to be carved is costs about three thousand dollars a foot, and the United Church through the moderator and the secretary general have endowed our program with $150,000 from bring, bringing home the children from, which we're very, very grateful. So this, this I mentioned because you were working together and this is what the, our indigenous community of faith we're doing. We don't want to see the main body of the United Church taking us as an afterthought within the church, as has happened for so long as we've been hearing tonight so but i believe strongly that we're on the right path we have confirmed so far um so we have the nudon drum group um cheryl trade who is uh jordan mckay drag queen kathy wheaton bird emerald rat um for jingle dance kira Rachel, can we get valerie Ewan, barnes to mute Chloe please be... thank you <laughs> I thought there was a bingo game going on there. Well, anyway, that kind of threw me off. But the last thing I want to comment on, which is very important to all of us, that in the Bible, we are fishermen of men, or fisherwomen of and we, the United Church, have to work harder to get our youth and children more involved in our church because we, if nothing, if we don't work harder and get more members into the church, our church will disappear in 20 years or more, or less, pardon me. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Ray. Always a pleasure to hear you speak. And uh, thank you everybody for this evening. Uh, just before we go to a closing prayer, uh, giving an opportunity to our three NIC members to give uh, any last uh, quick thought. Uh, I'll go to John first. Uh, thanks, Murray. I appreciate uh, uh, that. I, I greatly appreciate our time together tonight. Um, uh, the only concern uh, that uh, I guess uh, I feel uh, sad about in a sense, uh, that some feel that uh, the indigenous church wants to separate. <laughs> and uh, going back in, in time, uh, I remember uh, the same questions were raised when, when Kiwaitan was formed, the first uh, indigenous presbytery many years ago in 1982. But uh, 
that's not the case. Uh, I think what what we're about and what I think our discussion has has brought out this evening is uh, we we just want simply everyone to be who they are to share the gifts that Creator has given them, whether they be Indigenous or non-Indigenous. But the Indigenous Church needs the space, the time, and uh, you know the. Uh, the tools to uh, to establish uh, its on itself uh, its own uh, uh, system of self governance and to uh, to share and grow in the spirituality that has been a part of the uh, wisdom of the ages and to share that with the wider church and uh, and likewise uh, you know uh, we will always be in touch with one another and nurturing each other on the amazing journey of life of of faith and uh so i uh, thank you everyone for your input tonight thank you john kathy i can say just ditto to that john <laughs> no um it, what i got out of tonight is um i felt there was positive feedback as well as um, I think people want to learn and know more um, about us, our ways, and maybe the wider church can create that space um, for those um, talking and learning circles. And, you know, maybe that's a path. Um, that can be explored, you know, as we go forward from here. And maybe another information session, um, maybe in the cards for um, be, before the next gathering of the council or general council. Um, but other than that, I feel very positive and uplifted by the remarks, the questions, the inquiries. Um, it's all good. And with that, I say chmigwetch for all those people that came to listen tonight and to learn and to ask questions. And that's what it's all about. So I thank you all very, very much. Miigwech. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Russell. You know, um... We, uh, we learned a lot, I know, negative, positive. There's always good synergy coming out of those two, always. In our seven sacred teachings, love, respect, courage. Courage was a big, big one here. Uh, honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. This is what come out of this conversation, this, this good dialogue. And uh, I want to share uh, Michelle Hogman. Uh, I'm wondering, can communities of faith within the NIC be recognized as uh, co co covental communities within the UCC, members and participants within the denominations and autonomous? That's an awesome comment right there. I love it. So, you know, um, I think that that comment right there tells it all you know like we are communities of faith and there's many of us like the non-indigenous folks out there there's still a lot to learn there's still so much to learn about who we are and and uh and who you are and uh you know again this this uh, seven sacred teachings of, of of being courageous this is where this conversation has taken us it's a whole new realm of things and i want to end with crazy horse he says a very great vision is needed, and the man who has it must follow it as the eagle seeks the deepest blue of the sky. That was crazy horse. So this is what, what we're trying to achieve together in a good way. Hi, hi, my friends. You take care, stay safe. Love you all. Uh, thank you, Russell. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, John, uh, members of our uh, National Indigenous Council for being our, our, our hosts and speakers for this evening. Uh, before we uh, hand it over to our closing prayer, just uh, some quick uh, uh, identifications. Uh, the, 
the the questions and, and responses in the chats we are taking we are taking uh, we're taking note of that we will be using them and, and forwarding that on to the National Indigenous Council and and also towards the Elders Council as well for some some thought process as well because we do take uh, we take uh, recommend uh, highly our, the recommendations from the National Indigenous Elders Council as well. So that will be happening with this. Um, I know there's some scenarios that were not met tonight. Uh, voting process, uh, again, that was in, in the chat and we will look at those wholeheartedly uh, and respectively as well. So your words are not unheard in the chat as well. Just want everyone to know that. Uh, but at this point, I just wanna say a big thank you to all the IMJ staff uh, for all their given support this evening. And, and also to Eric uh, from French Ministries for helping us set up the supports for our French uh, relations. Uh, and to make it happen that uh, we can uh, keep the dialogue within the French language alive as well. Uh, and, and in particular tonight, our two interpreters, Alicia and Hugh, uh, my heart goes out to you for all the translations and work that you were doing for us tonight. And we will look forward to, to much more uh, greater dialogues in the future. I always say this is not the end. This is always the beginning. Uh, our path are set. Uh, as, a, as a journey as, as peoples, but as the United Church as well. And at this time, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, you are all a blessing to me. You all are my relations. And now is the time for our closing prayer. And we've asked our moderator, Richard Bott, to close us in prayer tonight. Thank you, Murray. And I'd like to thank the National Indigenous Council members uh, and, and the elders who are here uh, for, for offering this to all of the church tonight. Uh, just as I lead into the prayer, the, the, one, the one thing that I remember was Kat, Kathy Cunningham is on my advisory committee. And uh, in the early parts of my time as moderator, I wrote a, uh, a prayer uh, about what was happening on Wet'suwet'en territory. And uh, uh, when I wrote that prayer, uh, Kathy said to me, you know, I, I, read, I read your words, moderator, and they were pretty good words. But, you know, when I read them, it sounded like you were talking to just the settlers part of the church. And I'm United Church, too. Uh, you're my moderator, too. And I uh, for me, that's one of the things in this whole conversation I have, I, 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 that's, that was the reminder, we are the whole United Church, the Indigenous Church, the Settler Church, the, the church that's history, the church that, that, that's to come, we are the whole United Church. And, and this work you see before you that the National Indigenous Council brought and that the General Secretary brought, it's about it's about how are we going to be church together, uh, and and I am, I am prayerful about about what happens next around this. So thank you for the guidance tonight. Shall we pray? Creator God, uh, where I am, it's dark outside, and I am going to go and take a walk in the night sky, just to take a breath because there is so much that you have given through your people who were gathered here tonight. And I want to give thanks for every voice that has spoken in love and in respect and in hope for the, the wisdom and the wonder and for the, the response when words have been spoken that were offensive and hurtful. I pray that what we have shared tonight will help us to continue to be your people, filled with love and hope and respect, learning from one another, learning together, because we are this weird thing called the United Church. And God, as the night goes on and the sun comes up tomorrow, 
I pray that you would help us to go into the day ready to reach out to one another and to those who are hurting in your world, that we might truly be people who work to bring healing, who work to bring hope, who work to be people of love. I ask these things in the name of uh, my teacher, Jesus, in the name of the spirit that calls us and leads us and pushes us on and in the name of the creator who is always holding us. Amen and amen. Thank you, Murray. And thank you, moderator. And thank you, everyone. It has been a slice um, trying to be a host with the most this evening with everyone from across this great land we call home. Blessings to you all. Stay safe, stay alert, and stay loving. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.